You're not allowed to film when I have the right to reasonable privacy. I'm not in a public spot. I'm in my car. I have my children in my car, so I'd appreciate if you respect the laws. I, I am respecting the laws. I would respect you to respect the laws. I'm on a public sidewalk. Everyone got an issue with you, dog, and you spray that. I swear to God, dog. Try it. And you know, if you post any of this, I can sue you and take all your shit. Do not give me my personal space. I will whip this knife and stab you if you so hit you're me threatening? With that. You know what? I feel threatened right now, and I'm about to defend myself. I, I bet your dish bash is telling you to disengage. You know, Washington's a mutual combat state, so would you disengage. like to engage? It is not a stand your ground state. And Bad, it's, it's, a, it's a mutual combat. Would you like to engage? No, there is no mutual combat in Washington yes, state. Yes, there is, sir. Would you like to gain in mutual combat? I got two officers here. Hello, and welcome back to Legal Descent, where we evaluate your constitutional rights before they're taken away. On July 11th, 1804, two men engaged in mutual combat. Drawing pistols at 7 a.m. in Weehawken, New Jersey, reports stated that Alexander Hamilton raised his firearm into the air and intentionally fired into the sky as Aaron Burr shot Hamilton in the stomach, fatally wounding him and causing his death the very next day. Duels have littered our history books and have changed the course of nations. But do they still happen today, and are they legal? Thank you so much for joining us, and as always, if you enjoy our content, please do consider subscribing, liking, and interacting with us in the comments below. It really does help us create more content for you to enjoy. A subscriber submitted a video asking us, what were the rules that govern the doctrine of mutual combat? Yeah, this is not a topic I thought we'd be covering either, but it is pretty interesting. There are a few other topics that come up during this encounter that we will mention, but we will not dive into them as deeply as we normally would. The YouTuber No Bones Press was filming in public at a liquor store located at a shopping center in Rochester, Washington. He was approached a couple of times by staff of the businesses located within the shopping center, but no real conversations of note. The police even stopped him while he was walking down the street to check in on him and let him know he was doing nothing wrong. Very civil of them. The issue begins when he films an individual sitting in a car, which is visible from the public sidewalk. Why are you filming me in my car? I got my kids in my car. Washington State is a two-consent state, two-party consent. You're not allowed to film when I have the right to reasonable privacy. I'm not in a public spot. I'm in my car. I have my children in my car, so I'd appreciate if you respect the laws. I am respecting the laws. I would respect you to respect the laws. I'm on a public sidewalk. Whatever I see, Re whatever I Re see, Re whatever I see, I record. With the First Amendment. Dude, without exception of reasonable privacy. Cops just stopped and talked to me. No issue. Please disengage, sir. Let me disengage. I got my kids in the car. That's expectation of reasonable privacy. You're in public. No, expectation of reasonable privacy is my vehicle, no, my sir. bathroom, or my car. I can see through your window. There's no public. There's no privacy. Tent your windows. No bones pressed is correct. The vehicle is visible from publicly accessible property, and he is able to record. We've covered this issue in multiple videos before, so we won't spend a lot of time evaluating this. But, except for specialized peeping Tom laws, generally, if you are able to see it in public, you are able to record it. So you're out here just causing problems with what you're doing? I haven't caused any problems. You're the one that approached me. I was going on my kids. Turn, go, then go on your way, Go on your street. Go on your way. You know, are you like from Portland? Are you even from around here? Are you even freaking from around here? Step closer again, sir, and I will defend myself. Hey, you spray with that I'll be, I'll be jumping you next. Oh, so it's you causing problems. You already so got my face. A weapon on me. You already got my face. I don't give a f Everyone got an issue with you, dog, and you spray that I swear to God, dog, try it. So he'll, he's gonna try defend it, himself with a weapon. Yeah, yeah, I will yeah, defend you, myself you with pepper gun. spray, according to the uh, Washington RCW. Who gives a f and you know, if you post any of this, I can sue you and Go ahead, it'll so, be on YouTube tonight, sir. Okay, cool. Just know that they could delete it too, I hope you know that. Talk to my attorney, sir. If you are recorded in public, you have no reasonable expectation of privacy, and therefore that footage can be uploaded to the internet and sites like YouTube. Find you. you spray us with pepper oh, spray, you're I'll getting beat the Call self-defense. What? Look up the RCW. We're sitting here recording you. We're sitting here recording Look you. Up you. RCW. Nobody's Nobody's recording you. you. We're Nobody's recording you. Nobody's you. touching you. Do not you're give my personal space. I will pull out a knife and stab you. So you're with threatening that. with the weapon now. You can't have a weapon you have in your hand, hand, you idiot. It's no non-deadly. A knife is deadly. Learn the circumstances and the definition. That shit can blind somebody. They don't use that for a bear for nothing, you 
Hey, bear spray, you dumbass! Okay. People have the right to defend themselves, and in the state of Washington, they create an affirmative defense for self-defense in RCW section 9A.16.020. Basically, you have to be reasonable in believing that someone is about to hurt you or commit a felony against you. However, an important caveat is that the use of force must not be more than necessary. Using a knife against someone with pepper spray does not seem reasonable to me because one is lethal and the other is not. Fortunately, neither is used in this situation. You know what? I feel threatened right now, and I'm about to defend myself. Back you better up. back up. I back feel up. Threatened. You just approached me for the third I feel time. I threatened. Back you up. You just approached me for the third I time. I feel threatened. Back up or I'm going to defend I bet myself. your dispatch is telling you to disengage. You know, Washington's a mutual combat state, so would you disengage. like to engage? It is not a stand your ground state. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a mutual combat. Would you like to engage? No, there is no mutual combat in Washington yes, state. Yes, there is, sir. So now we get to the topic of mutual combat. What is it and is it legal? First, there is no law in the state of Washington, or any state for that matter, that prescribes any type of mutual combat law or allows duels to be fought through statutory law. Mutual combat finds its roots in common law. Common law is the area of law that is derived from custom and judicial precedent as opposed to statutes created by your state or federal legislators. You see this principle exhibited in violent contact sports like football, boxing, or mixed martial arts that allows individuals to strike, hit, tackle, and engage in physical altercations, which in everyday life could result in criminal charges being filed. As long as the damage or the severity of the battery was reasonably foreseeable to what the individual consented to. For example, a quarterback being sacked and experiencing a broken arm from the tackle that did not violate the rules put in place by the National Football League would not be prosecutable or liable for a civil claim. But if the defensive player ripped off the quarterback's helmet and then began bludgeoning him with it, I would expect criminal charges to be filed. Mutual combat, in a street fighting sense, especially in Seattle, Washington, was made popular by the YouTuber and self-proclaimed superhero Phoenix Jones, who was a MMA fighter turned vigilante who roamed the streets of Seattle with a band of costumed individuals who served as a sort of neighborhood watch and would beat up people who agreed to mutual combat. His story is actually really interesting, and if you would like me to make a video about his exploits from a legal perspective, leave a like on this video. And if we get over 2,000 likes, I'll go ahead and make one. What it comes down to is that mutual combat is basically a gentleman's agreement that if you fight, you don't tell the cops, and you do not participate in the prosecution. No witness, no crime. However, having someone agree to mutual combat for a street fight will not protect you from prosecution or civil liability if the other individual wants to pursue those courses of action. Mutual combat is not recognized as a defense at all in any civil case and is considered a long shot in most criminal procedures. So to answer the question, mutual combat is not a great defense and would just be evidence included in a standard self-defense argument, and we do not recommend that you or anyone engages in this type of conduct. You're not walking down the sidewalk, dude. I was. Putting the cameras in front of people's faces on purpose. Dog. Never got it put in front of your face. Can you guys tell them like you just talked to me and they're walking down the sidewalk? Is public. See, he's approaching me again. See, as the cops are saying, back the out of my space. He was deliberately putting the camera and recording us on purpose. Like everybody over there. can come into my car with my children in it. Watch us say, well, yes. How did I come into your car? What I can see from public, I can record. I can see you. I'm on private property. I'm conducting my business at Key Bank. That's private property. I can see you. Okay, so then, so then he can do that. He can come up and so my children. over there then? Take my license plate. over there in that parking lot. So when I got in a rear end accident right there, they said it was private property. So how is that true? I was not in the parking lot. And then what about what about threatening me with mace? So he's saying he's gonna put it on YouTube. I can sue him for that technically. You're not allowed to put I, I it on social media. Okay. Well, Google, Google, well, Google, well, either way. So hold on, let me ask you a question. Why are you guys on us? 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 And not the guy out here causing problems. You called. I filed a complaint of concealment for a threat. You called. The officers actually do a decent job here of informing the complainants that they have no reasonable expectation of privacy in public and that they are not able to sue him for posting the footage onto YouTube. 
The issue begins when the officers tell the auditor to stop talking so that they can listen to the other guys. And then the auditor walks into the middle of the street to film the police car. The video does freeze for a little bit here, but we can still hear the audio. I pay taxes too, thank you. So I'm being harassed right now. No, sir, you approached me several times, you called them. I'm talking. I want to file a harassment. I want him identified, I want to file a harassment. Hold it down. What law is that, sir? What law? That I can't say my piece. You can say your piece, but let us talk, okay? I'm not interrupting you guys. When we're trying to discuss things and you're so yelling over top of us, it makes it difficult. I'm not over talking you guys, I'm over talking okay. the asshole. You're doing it right now. Just hold on, okay? How come I can't follow the board? Harass me. Harass me. Follow me around with the camera. You like, made everybody do it. It is fucking weird. Yeah, like, what the fuck? No, that's a problem. Hey, now you're walking in the street. Duke down the street. Your safety ain't my concern. No, your safety is my concern. Out of the street, please. Do not put your hands on me. Out of the street. Do not put your hands on me. Out of the street. You need to get out of the street, though. Why? Because you're in traffic. What traffic, sir? You're on a roadway, dude. What traffic? Okay. You're okay. All right. Easy, easy. What is this all about? Because you're not listening. What? I'm not restraining. What do you want me to do? I don't know. But please give me a command. Back. Okay. Please put give me a command. Right please give me back. a command. Put your hands behind your back. My hands are behind my back, so Perfect. why is he still twisting me? Well, you just hold on to you. Just don't resist. I can't feel my fingers now. Well, you're okay. Just relax. Can you pick up my phone, my uh, camera you just broke? I didn't break it. So the officers do have a legitimate reason to want him out of the roadway. For his safety and the safety of passing motorists, it is reasonable for them to escort him out of the street. However, common sense would dictate that tackling him and cuffing him in the middle of that roadway is not the most effective way of accomplishing their purported goal of safety. The auditor does admit he was still holding his pepper spray and courts would find that a reasonable officer would be threatened by the spray and therefore I believe that most courts would not find that the officers did anything that violated the law in this situation. Regardless, the police do end up letting him go after giving him a lecture about how filming in public can rub people the wrong way and they may not be there next time to bail him out. To me, this whole encounter is relatively silly. If the man who was offended by being filmed had just driven away with his family, no one would have cared, just like the countless other drivers of vehicles that pass by in this video. In this internet era of Karens and overly dramatic meltdowns in public, acting like a reasonable human being goes a long way, and discretion is often the better part of valor. What do you think? Should mutual combat be legally allowed? Should we bring back the days of Alexander Hamilton and Aaron Burr? Or do we live in a more civilized time? Let us know in the comments below. And remember that no matter who you are, you have value and you have rights. Do not be afraid to use them. And we'll see you next time right here on Legal Descent.